Hello and welcome to another episode of the 181 Rider Championship and we are here today for the Australian Grand Prix. Now this one could be quite interesting because there's a lot of flowing corners obviously the main feature of this track really being how flowing it is and I must say the frame rate looks fantastic right now uh, that I've noticed it looks really good so hopefully it might be quite an easy one for us to actually ride but anyway without further ado we'll head into the race we've got to try and beat Miller and Morbidelli here Get ready for the carnage. Here we go. <laughs> Bikes all over the place. Oliver is being pushed over there as well. Oh, well, there's still people. It's still raining people. There's someone stuck on the pit wall in the background. It might be Mick doing actually. Oh, Schwantz has just gone up in the air. All right, we'll skip the uh, cutscene now. There's a uh, nine Ross far in the pack as well. So we're on the grid. Marcos Ramirez next to us. The same win thing as Danny Pedrosa on the floor there. Actually, it might be Dovi. So I'll wait for around 10 seconds. But there is a lot, a lot of carnage. There's still people all over the floor here. Uh, Lopez going backwards here. Right, let's go. We actually were last then. Oh, there's people spawning backwards as well, but. People struggling to get going. It's Randy Depunier in front of us. Oh, someone up in the air in the f bit further ahead. There's Crash Galore. Just people across the whole track. It's impossible to see what's going on here. And there's people. And there, Bastianini's just sort of carved his way through. There's uh, a Kawasaki there. Apparently, I've got a mod on by accident. <laughs> Lucas Tulovic, inside of Lucas Tulovic we go. Luca Marini up ahead. No, Tulovic has got back past us. Right inside of Tulovic. So it's a 70 second. But yeah, at the start there, that was pretty insane. And I've just realised that I've got a Kawasaki and a Panigale mod on. So that might affect things. Oh, there's someone crashed in Sodas. Oh, 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 oh. We've had to go on the grass to not crash with them. We've been re overtaken by Marini. Shinya Nakano's been overtaken by Marini as well. So, uh,. Yeah, not looking like Nakano's going to be scoring any points. Uh, crash for Sam Lowe's there. Oh, there's people off to the side here. I think that might be Sam Lowe's, maybe. Dominic Agatha's crashed as well. There's John McPhee in front of us. Past McPhee, past Nakano. Marini up next. Tom Bothamos had a crash as well. Looking for the move around the outside of Marini. Here we go. So Lukey Heights, we're going to be looking around the outside of Binder. There's a big train in front of us. Oh, Binder's hit clipped inside curb and ran a bit wide into our path there. Around the outside of Binder, trying to outbreak him into MG Corner. Nothing Binder can do to re overtake us. So Lorenzo leads the race then. Vinales second, Marquez third, Rossi fourth, Schwantz, Lawson, Rossi again. Rins, Rossi, Rossi. So lots of Rossi's in the top ten here. If we go through the final turn. The Moto 3 rider there in front of Burn, I think it's Mino not losing too much time, but on the straight here, that's where it's all going to, you know, there's going to be a massive difference in speed because this is one of the fastest straights. Two Moto 3 riders there splitting, I think that was Remy Gardner. So we go into turn one, I'm about to sit up because I could see some were on my line there. Well, I've gone off way too much, lost a lot of time there. We're back behind Remy Gardner again now, but it was worth it to not hit the KTM, there was a, there was a KTM on my line. There's a big train of riders, and I've just ran wide and lost a position to a Moto 3 rider there. So like I said, they actually can sort of carry the corner speed. Pushing Tom Lutie out the way there, so up to 53rd position now, a lap 2 of 7. We've actually got a lot of laps here. I suppose the lap time isn't all too long at this circuit, but it's quite a long track, I, I always think. I always think it's one of the tracks that feels longer anyway, at least. And we are coming up to the Red Bull Rookies riders now. Someone's off there. It's Lowe's. Oh, they're all getting in the way. And they're all rejoining the racing line as well. But I can cut underneath these ones. That's nice. It's going to be scary. They're coming out of Siberia and into sort of the hay shed catching them up. That's going to... Oh, it's just a big cluster of them there. And they're closing in on the apex. There's massive crash. Massive crash. So many people down there. Managed to get my way through. Up to 29th position now. By Jean Zarco. Past Zarco we go. Up to 28th. Caparossi on the curb on the inside, he's got to watch out for that. But yeah, that was absolute madness. That was not a good place to catch them. There was just people flipping up in the air. Possible to see what's going on, but we've passed Loris Caparossi now, up into 27th position on the at the end of lap two. 
Nakagami behind Crutchlow. So that Lorenzo's had a crash now because Vinales leads. He did the fast up a 128. I don't think we'll be troubling scorers in terms of lap times. Obviously, we had our excursion at turn one on this lap. Oh, I've hit Nagashima. The frame rate's dropping again now. So the frame rate was really nice on the grid, but it's quite low at this point in the race. Uh, I've not seen any comments about it, but I'm assuming people have realised that it, the frame rate is low because of the amount of riders on track. Some cat Chantra there has been bashed out of the way by Cal Crutchlow into turn one. Oh, I've cut the inside curve. That's basically a death sentence. I'm glad I've not fell off there. That's allowed Chantra and Nakagami to come back up the inside. I've just pushed Nakagami out of the way. I'm probably being a little cautious here, especially into Turn 1, but Turn one's a corner that I crash out a lot anyway, so definitely don't need the added difficulty of the low frame rate and all the riders. Vincente Perez has crashed there, so now Cal Crutchlow is a rider I'm going to try and hunt down. There is a lot of riders in front, so we should, if we uh, keep it up, get a decent amount of points. There's Kevin Schwantz, so he was in the top 10, so we're not too far behind the leaders, I don't think. Obviously, he might have had a crash. But we can't be too far behind them. Kevin Schwantz taking a very weird line through there. Nakayuchenko's had a crash. Not sure whereabouts on the track they'll be. I'm guessing they'll probably be at the start of the lap. Because you usually catch them. So this could be a clean lap. Which we need to obviously take full advantage of. Which I've not particularly done because we've only managed to pass... Well, we've passed three riders on this lap. Nakagami, uh, Chantra and uh, now Kevin Schwantz as well. Oh no, they, ha they are here I think. Oh no... I just saw a crash and I saw someone in the mid-pack going for a move, but it's Casey Stoner going for a move on someone rather than uh, someone being offline going slowly. And there's three three wide up ahead. I think that's uh, Wayne Gardner scrolls out on the outside there. Oh, here they are, yeah. So they are sort of on the straight, but they're also in the last corner. Stoner's hit them. We're all riding inside of them. Oh! Rainy hit someone. I've gone to the wrong side of the track, really, haven't I? Yes, I have. I've just been flipped up in the air. I've got to try not to get collected here. Oh, I've just knocked Marquez off, I think. Oh, there's people all over the place. I'm being pushed off. Just being on the side of the track is dangerous. McWilliams in front of us there. We're still running through the grass. We're still running through the grass. This is a dangerous section to be in. And we're now up into the points paying positions as we go towards doing corner now. Oh, nearly being hit there by Foray because Pedrosa just ping-ponged him into our path. Rossi's behind us, the modern-day Valentino Rossi. Alex Crivier in front of us as well. Just remembering back to the last episode with his absolute charge to the packway. We just went full speed and it seems like that's just cleared out that whole pack. So there was a big pack in front of us that we were catching up to and that pack has just been absolutely cleared out because we're now to 10th position after all that. Rossi's down now apparently. And it's it, Alex DeAngelis. I don't know why I've broke so early for the Honda hairpin here. Extremely early there. I didn't even make any ground on Crivier. Considering on lap 4, we definitely want to be making inroads on people. So I need to get past Crivier and then I can just sort of go for it a little bit because I'll have a clean lap. Because there's no there's no one anywhere near, near us up in front. Something inside of Crivier we go. Up into ninth place now. So Maverick Vinales still leads the race, so it's go going good for our teammate here. He's got a massive lead. I'm guessing he probably got through all of that carnage because that was that was terrible. Quattro is 4.6 seconds in front of us. But on the straight, there was no avoiding all of that. You could go to the left hand side of the track, right hand side of the track, middle of the track. There was people all over the track. And unfortunately, I picked to go to the left-hand side. I probably would have fared a little better maybe in the middle. But uh, then I ended up going off the track, and that seemed to be the way to go. When they uh, when they fill a straight like that, there's not much you can do. Over the line of 1 minute 30.5, so we're pretty far off any kind of decent pace right now. And 5-6 seconds off. So we're going to doing corner. I can see, I've just looked on the mini-map, I can see there's lots of riders, and they are here as well. Oh, if it's Zonta. Oh, but I've stayed on. Sorry, Zonta. I know you watch these sometimes. I just cleared you out, mate. Sorry about that. Oh. 
lots of them all over the place. This is difficult to carve my way through, and it looks... Oh, we're on now to eight, so we've overtaken a couple of people. Actually, I think it might just be Quattroaro, but Dovizioso's up next. I can see him in front of us. Oh, he's making an attack on someone ahead of him. Lots of riders going slow here. Oh, it's just a Moto3 rider, I think. Yeah, it's Tom Buthamos. Oh, it's been another crash up ahead. Oh, and he's spawned right in the... Oh, and he's killed Tom Buthamos. He's absolutely destroyed him there. I think it was Mike Demelio just spawned in the middle of the track and poor Tom Booth could do nothing about it. <laughs> this lap has been one of the most chaotic because there has literally been people all the way around the lap. As we caught them at sort of the, the, the beginning, well the end of the previous lap and beginning of the next lap last time and then there were still people going around the southern loop. Uh, Red Bull Rookies riders. Luckily I managed to stay on with pushed uh, Vincente Perez out the way. We're up to 7th place. Hopefully we can maybe get a couple more places. There's, there should be another wave or so. It'll be easier to get through. I guess we saw on that lap. When you're not in the pack, it's a lot easier to get through the riders because they're the only people in front of you. And there's still people here at the start of the lap as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Aaron Canet on the inside of Canet there. Overshot just because I had to try and make it to the corner before him. It's allowed him and uh, Toba to get back in front. Actually, it might be Agora. Oh, I bashed Canet out of the way there. I Agora's back up the inside. See, the Motor 3 riders, they, uh, through the corners, through some of these uh, swooping corners, they can get you back if you just dive up the inside. 3.9 seconds to Davizio. Oh, no, it's Abraham. Okay, Davizio is now behind us by 4.6, so uh, Davizio has crashed. I could just see red in front of us still. Don't know who it is. Oh, it's the Gio Cato in 127th position. I did think the gap seemed a bit disproportionate to how far the person was in front of me, but uh, then I read the name and uh, it obviously all clicked with me. I feel like we probably won't be able to catch Carol up. Especially if Philip Salach moves straight over onto my line when I'm trying to go past him. Oh, but the, here is... Here is the pack. The pack of slow-moving riders. I don't know what lines they're going to be. Oh, they're on the kerb. Oh, someone's just cleared them out, as Kato's cleared them out for me. I see Rossi and Vermeulen up ahead. Oh, no, it's Ram Ramirez. Where have I got Vermeulen from with that? I just saw blue and just assumed it was a... Oh, Rossi's cut me up. I thought he was going to have me off. Vinales is down. Vinales is down. So he might have lost the lead there, potentially. Oh, Kato's just cleared another one out for me. Kato has just helped me out so much through this one, because people that would be right on my line, he's absolutely destroyed. Oh, they're on the outside of the circuit now. Still crashes coming through this section. Crash galore. Back markers everywhere. I'm third place, I've just realised. Onto the start, finish. Oh, dear. Vinales still leads. Oh, Rossi, Rossi. Oh, dear, Valentino Rossi. We are now third. We're first. We're first place. Hang on. I'm now first. On the inside of Sam Lowe's we go into turn one. I'm in first position. Wow. Okay, this is uh, uncharted territory. There's Ralph Fernandez up ahead. Not Ralph Fernandez. Augusto Fernandez. You can see I'm a bit flustered here. We've never actually won from waiting at the start before. We got second once from waiting at the start. And we've won a couple of times when we've just gone with the pack when, uh, you know, there's not been packs of slow-moving riders. Uh, those are the episodes where I'm allowed to go with a pack. But uh, we've never won straight from the back, and it looks like we might be able to here. It's, it took a very drastic turn right at the end. That straight proved to be the most deadly part of the whole, uh, you know, the whole track. Just that start-finish strip, because they just litter that straight and the last corner and the corner after it. Marquez is the fastest lap of 27-1. So, uh, yeah, it's absolutely crazy scenes here. There is still people up ahead, so we've got to watch out for that. We are not out of the woods yet, but I think they might just be Moto3 riders, which obviously are still, still a risk to me, because I'm obviously going to be travelling a lot faster than them. But, they're not going to just be stopped on the apex. I've almost bottled that then, going off into the grass. I don't know who's second position not going to lie to you, and it's probably going to be a randomised order, because when I win, it seems to be a pretty randomised order, so let's hope Jack Miller's not artificially boosted up the order, same with Franco Morbidelli, but this could be one step, massive, well, a massive step towards the championship here, as we round the last corner, we're up towards the line, we're going to win here in Australia, we're going to win 
once again in the 181 Rider Championship. And look at this carnage. Look at it. <laughs> They're still on the straight. Can my AI get through? Oh, he got through most of it. So then, in the end, I won the race, obviously, ahead of Maverick Vinales ended up second. So 1-2. I think this has got to be the first 1-2 in the whole series for any team. Obviously, Monster Energy Yamaha gets in the 1-2 there uh, with uh, third place for Bang Naya. So one of my championship rivals still pretty close to us. Let's see, did either Miller or... No, Miller doesn't seem to be anywhere near the points. But he's outside the points anyway, at the very least. Did anybody, did anyone notable score points? I think this actually seems to be a pretty standard uh, sort of top rider. I don't think it's simulated the times all too much, to be honest. So no, like, Moto E riders up near the front or anything like that. Alex Barros, 18. Yeah, so it just seems like a normal standing. So have a look at the championship standings. Are 49 points ahead of Jack Miller. So we can actually, uh, what, so we're, oh, thank you, uh, the game tells me in the top right, we're around 17 of 19, which is exactly what I thought. We can wrap up the championship in the next episode. All we have to do is not be outscored by 24 points to Jack Miller. So basically, if we score points, we win the, We win in the next episode. So that's, uh, that, that took a bit of a turn that I didn't expect. Uh, Bang Nine moves back up to third, so the, the Pramat boys are still, still really bringing it home. But uh, me and uh, Vinales are going to have done our team championship a very good amount of... Uh, well, I don't know if they actually t only take Valentino's points, so it might not have taken Mavericks, which would be a shame, obviously. They should take the top two riders, really. So we'll have a look how many riders have scored points in this one. But this was a really, really difficult episode. Just... Oh, the, the straights were covered. You can't believe how hard it is to avoid them. Like, I know uh, a lot of you in the comments have acknowledged how hard it would be, but... Honestly, you don't know how hard it, hard it is live. So 101 of the 181 riders have scored points, which I think is exactly the same as last time. So I'm guessing the teams won't have changed. But we have moved ahead. No, it did it did count in Yalas' points, so that's all right. Uh, we now rock it to 22 points ahead of Pramat Race in Patronus. Uh, Quattaro had a pretty good finish, so they still sat, still sat in third place. Again, we'll have a look at how many teams have scored. I think it was uh, about 80-something of them had scored before, was it? No, it was oh, 70, that's what it was. Uh, so who's moved down and who's moved up then? Our team Roberts have moved up. Oh, is that their first points? It might be. So there's now 72 of the 102 teams. So only 30 left to score. So actually, I think that might be the same as the previous episode, actually. I think I remember saying that. So there's two more races for some of these to score. They're not all going to get... Well, they could actually all technically get it. Kawasaki Racing. They're still poor on Nakano. Just is not getting the look, is he? Bless him. He could. He, he has an opportunity to score points for sure in the constructors championship. It's all but wrapped up. Really, looks like Yamaha are probably going to win. It's only between Yamaha and Ducati, but it does look like Yamaha will end up winning. Uh, MV Augusta move ahead of Kawasaki in the championship actually. So that means uh, I, d I think I did see Manzi quite far up the order actually. So Manzi probably beat Nakano. So that's not great for them. And Energica obviously don't really never really have had a chance to score points. Same with Envy Augusta because it's quite rare that any of the Moto2 teams have scored points. But they have occasionally done so. And obviously there's only two of them so it's quite difficult in the constructors. But yeah, that's uh, that's it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed that one. Like I said, it was absolute carnage. Um, yeah, so that's basically all I've got to say. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next one.